Welcome into Mock Trial Masterclass, your guide to controlling the courtroom. I'm Luke and I want you to be a Mock Trial Master. Let's talk about how you can make that happen. One of the most important rules of evidence to have a firm grasp of is hearsay. It comes up a lot in the mock trial world and it's really crucial for you as an attorney to know exactly what hearsay is and what hearsay isn't. So that's exactly what we're going to go over in this video. We're going to break down the definition of hearsay and like I just said, we're going to talk about what hearsay is and also importantly, what hearsay is not. That way you'll have a firm grasp of the concept heading into your next mock trial competition and you'll be ready to argue hearsay objections like a mock trial master. Ready to hop in? Let's do it. So I'm going to start by throwing the definition of hearsay up on the screen if you're watching on YouTube, and we're going to talk about it together and talk about what some of these words mean. Here it is. The hearsay rule comes to us through rule 801C, and it says this. Hearsay means a statement that, one, the declarant does not make while testifying at the current trial or hearing, and two, a party offers in evidence to prove the truth of the matter asserted in the statement. So I want to start off by defining three words in that rule that I think are immediately going to help us all get a much clearer understanding of what this rule is talking about because it's really like big time lawyer language that we just read but some of the words in here are words that I promise you know. Let's start with that first word. Hearsay is a statement. Let's think for a second about what a statement is. By the very nature of that word statement, a statement is something that states something. A statement isn't a question that's asking for information. It's not a command that is just telling someone what to do. A statement is a type of sentence that states something. In other words, there is information being passed along in the statement, in the sentence. Right? If you want to think about the types of sentences you learned about when you were in grammar school, a statement is a declarative sentence. It is a sentence that is declaring something. There is something being stated. If there's not something being stated, then it's not a statement. So the first thing that tells us about the hearsay rule is, though it's applying to things people say, which you probably already knew, right? Hearsay is applying to things people say, hearsay, it only applies to statements. It doesn't deal with questions, and it doesn't deal with imperative commands. So that's the first part of the hearsay rule that we can talk about. The second word I want to highlight from the definition of hearsay is declarant. Declarant is a fancy word that just means the person who said the thing. So everything that you're hearing right now in this video or in this podcast, if you're listening on a podcast platform, the declarant of all of these things is me, Luke Worsham. I'm the one saying all of these things. I am the declarant. Here's the thing, too. If you then go to your friend and say, hey, I was listening to this mock trial podcast and this guy named Luke said these really interesting things. Here's what he said. Even you in that moment quoting those things, I am still the declarant of those statements because you're passing along what I said. So I know this might be tricky, but even though you in that moment would be saying the words, what you're really doing is you're quoting words that I said. So the declarant, when we think about it in the context of hearsay, the declarant is the person who originally said the thing. If someone is quoting someone else, if Mark is quoting John, John is still the declarant, even though Mark currently might be speaking. Does that make sense? Right? The person who originally said the thing is the declarant. If I were to quote the I have a dream speech for you right now, Martin Luther King would still be the declarant of that speech. If I were to quote the Gettysburg Address, four scores and seven years ago, our fathers, blah, 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 Abraham Lincoln is still the declarant of the Gettysburg Address. Declarant means the person who said the thing, but within the context of hearsay, specifically declarant means the person who originally said the thing. A lot of times it means the person who is being quoted. Another important term to define from the hearsay rule is the term, the matter asserted. This one sounds really big and fancy, but it's actually pretty simple. See, the matter asserted in a statement is simply the thing that that statement is asserting. So let's say I were to tell you, hey, I think it's going to rain outside. What am I asserting in that statement? I think it's going to rain outside. 
If I were to tell you that the Civil War took place in the 1800s, wow, we've got a lot of Civil War references in this video. If I were to tell you the Civil War happened in the 1800s, what would I be asserting with that statement? Because remember, statements have truth in them. Statements say something. They, they, they convey information. The thing I'm asserting in that statement, the matter asserted in the Civil War happened in the 1800s would be, you guessed it, that the Civil War happened in the 1800s. See, the matter asserted in a statement is just the thing that that statement conveys. Because remember, statements convey information. Statements convey something. And so the matter asserted is simply that thing that the statement is conveying. It's the matter being asserted by the declarant who gives the statement. See how all of this starts to fit together? Okay, so at this point, let's recap. Here's what we've got. We know that hearsay must be a statement. For something to be considered hearsay, it must be a statement. All right? It has to convey some kind of information. We also know that it's going to have a declarant. There's going to be someone who said this thing, more specifically, someone who originally said this thing. Even if we're quoting someone, we're still only concerned with the person who originally said the thing. And we also know that it's got something to do with the matter asserted, the actual thing being declared, the actual statement being made, the, the information being conveyed in the statement, that's going to be important too. Right? We know all of those things. And there's one other component we can look at, which is at the end of the rule where it says, other than one made by the declarant while testifying in court. That's a lot of words to mean one very, very simple truth. And that's this. The hearsay rule only deals with out-of-court statements. Things that witnesses say while they're on the witness stand and they're sworn in court, those are going to be fair game. The hearsay rule only deals with statements, only deals with sentences and things being said that convey information, and they only deal with statements that happened outside of the courtroom. Those statements also had a declarant, a person who said the statement, and we know that they have to have asserted some kind of truth, otherwise they wouldn't be considered a statement and they wouldn't be eligible under this rule. There's one more phrase we're going to have to look at that's going to finish the box for us, that's going to put a bow on top and help us to really understand all of these concepts. So what I would recommend at this point, because hearsay can be complicated and all of these rules of evidence take some time to digest. This isn't something you can always grasp you know, by the end of the day or by tomorrow. Pause the video, go back to the beginning where we started talking about this definition, and refresh yourself on some of those terms. Then come right back to this point, go ahead and mark the timestamp, come back to this point, and then let's put a bow on the box. Before we put a bow on the box, though, I want to remind you that my book, Mock Trial Masterclass, is available for purchase on Amazon. And guys, objections can be really complicated, no matter how experienced you are in mock trial. And one of the reasons I wrote this book is to help make it a little bit simpler. If this breakdown of hearsay has been helpful for you in helping uh, to gain a better understanding of what the rule really says and not be so overwhelmed by some of those big terms that seem really, really confusing, breakdowns like that of every major rule of evidence are in this book. We talk about relevance, hearsay of course. We talk about improper character evidence. We talk about objections dealing with experts, speculation, lack of personal knowledge. All those major objections have breakdowns just like this one in this book, as well as tips for making objections and arguing objections in general. And when you match that plan with these objection breakdowns and an understanding of the rules of evidence, that was when you'll really start to turn the tide as an objector in a mock trial. So if you're ready to hop in and get started, pick up a copy of the book, click the link in the description on YouTube or in the show notes on podcast platforms. All right, we've talked about declarants, we've talked about the matter asserted, we've talked about statements. Let's put a bow on this whole thing. So hearsay deals with out-of-court statements made by a declarant that are being offered in court, this is the last part of the rule, for the truth, to prove the truth of the matter asserted. So let's put a bow on this by explaining what that phrase means. You know what the matter asserted means. It just means the literal thing being declared by the sentence, the actual thing being stated, the information being conveyed. So even if a statement was made out of court, it has a declarant, and it is indeed a statement, for it to be hearsay, the party who is offering the statement must be doing so to prove 
the truth of the matter asserted. In other words, to prove that the matter asserted, the thing being stated, is true. So let's go back to some of our earlier examples, right? Use the phrase, it's raining today. If for whatever reason you were in court offering the fact that I said, it's raining today, right? It's an out-of-court statement. I made it while shooting this video, not while in a courtroom. There's a declarant, it's me. It's stating a truth, right? The fact that it's raining today. But it's only hearsay if the reason you're offering that statement or if the reason your opponent was offering that statement would be to prove the truth of what I asserted. Now remember, what I asserted is that it's raining today. So if someone is proving the truth of that statement, what it means is the reason they're offering the statement is to prove that it was in fact raining that day. In that situation, again, the statement was a statement. Right? It's not a question, it's not a command. It was made out of the courtroom by a declarant, me, and in that situation, if you're trying to prove that it was raining for whatever reason, you would be offering that statement to prove the truth of the matter asserted, to prove the truth of the thing I stated, and therefore it would be hearsay. That's how this rule works. Now, you've probably got a question, and it's a great one, which is, so what does it look like when a statement that was made out of court and has a declarant and is a statement is not being offered for the truth of the matter asserted? Well, Let's do this scenario. Let's say that for whatever reason, we're in a town where it is illegal to have umbrellas. And I'm on trial for having used an umbrella. So we go in the courthouse and I'm on the witness stand and I make the statement to the jury. I look them in the eye and say, actually, I didn't even know it was going to rain that day. So how in the world could I possibly have an umbrella? Why would I have even brought one with me that day? And then you get on the witness stand and you said, actually, I was talking to Luke that day, that morning, and he told me it's going to rain today. Now, let's hold up for a second. In that situation, would we really care if it was actually going to rain that day? Because here's the deal. We can probably get that information from other people. We could probably use a weather report. We could probably use people who were walking around that day who said, yes, I was there and it was raining, and we wouldn't have to use a quote. We wouldn't have to use a hearsay statement. And so in that moment, when you were on the witness stand after I've said, didn't even know it was raining that day, and now you're on the witness stand and you're saying, actually, he told me it was going to rain that day. What I would argue is that you're not actually trying to prove the matter asserted. You're not trying to prove the truth of what I said, which is that it was raining. You're simply trying to prove that I'm a liar. What you're trying to do is prove... Not that it actually was going to rain, because really, who cares? What you're trying to prove is that I did, despite what I said earlier, know it was going to rain. You're trying to prove what was in my head. You're trying to prove what I believed, not the truth of what I actually said. And in a situation like that, the statement would not be considered hearsay. Because, again, for something to be hearsay, it does need to be out of court, there does need to be a declarant, and it does need to be a statement that is conveying information of some kind, but it only counts as hearsay as if the truth being, or if whatever's being asserted, but it only counts as hearsay if whatever is being asserted in that statement, the truth of the matter asserted is what you're trying to prove. This is a lot to take in. I know that. So like I suggested earlier, go back, rewatch this video, go back through it again. And I think the more times you go through this, you'll start to get the picture of that's what hearsay is. And once you get that picture of hearsay and what it is and what it isn't, you'll be on your way to arguing the hearsay rule like a mock trial master. If you have any comments or you want to dive further into hearsay, you can pick up my book. Feel free to shoot me an email, leave a comment below this video. Or if you want to schedule coaching with me and you or with me and your team, you can do that as well by clicking the link on YouTube or in the description on podcast platforms. Can't wait for you to start arguing hearsay like a mock trial master, and I can't wait to hear about it when you do.